Virgil Ortiz. Virgil Ortiz got a win over uh, Michael McKinson. Let's talk about him a little bit since we're here. Let's talk about my man Virgil Ortiz. Let me pull up his resume. Let's be honest. Like, you know, we never really, I never really did like a full in death like chat video on Virgil Ortiz and how I feel about him as a fighter. Here, let me pull up his uh his uh box rec here. Let's get Connor Ben out of here. Yeah, Connor Ben, you gotta go. Let's get that out of here. All right. But yeah, I mean, I like him, you know, but I'm just not, I don't know if I'm sold. And when I say when I'm sold on a fighter, I don't really feel it in my gut. I don't really feel it in my gut. You know, I'm like, like when I see him and you know how I was just talking about with Spence Crawford, like, yo, they some special fighters. I don't know. I'm still on the fence. Is that a crime? I'm still on the fence. That's my right. 19 and no with 19 KOs, 24 years old. That is impressive, though. That body shot he hit McKinson with, that last one, it was almost like a love tap, and he went down. Dude got the power. I mean, look. Samuel Var and Rose Co. Brad Solomon, Sam Vargas, Maurice Hooker, Kavalaskis. Kavalaskis. McKinson, but McKinson was fighting like a decade in there too. I'm thinking like, yo, bro, you better start. What is, what is, if there's one punch you think he should constantly use just by looking at his box rec, one punch that you think he should base his whole fucking career around just by looking at his box rec, what is it? The damn jab. If you got just two KOs, I'm expecting for you to be twinkle toes out there. I'm expecting for you to be a fucking ballet dancer. I'm expecting for you to be dancing the night away. That's just, that's the fight I expected. But big balls on him. He tried to engage the first few rounds of the fight. Then he started backing his ass off. But by that time, it was too late. Ninth round stoppage. Down on the ground, fucking rolling around. No, he wasn't rolling around. He just was like, ah, shit. Ah, shit. Let me see if I can get you a uh, highlight. This was a fight that was supposed to happen earlier in the year, but um, Virgil Ortiz was having weight issues and to the point where, you know, he had to be hospitalized from my understanding. So um, the fight was postponed. By the way, uh, shout out to Blair the Flair Cobbs beating Maurice Hooker. Tell me right now, was, was Blair Cobbs beating Hooker an upset one Press one in the chat, two for no. Because I thought that Maurice Hooker was going to win. I didn't think that Blair Cobbs was going to be able to get that. Or oh, GT Jr. McKinson. I think it was an upset. I was like, oh shit, you go, motherfucking Blair Cobbs. Philly, stand up. Let me see if I can show you this. Like the body shot was just a tap. It was a, a love tap. Like it wasn't even that hard. He always has to be moving and pivoting. Nah, then again, that did that shit did sound like it hurt. Oh, this is when he got up. I'm looking for the second one. But yeah, he was down there fucked up. Look, ass all up in the air. Finally does the trick as McKinson's down for the first time as a pro. It was a body shot that hurt. I'm looking for the second one. I'm looking for the second one. All right, we got some mixed reviews. But Blair always looked vulnerable. And Maurice Hooker, he just looked done, bro. Like, what was up with him? Here we are. Oh, here it is. Here's here's the clip of uh, Virgil Ortiz stopping McKinson. And it was just like a little bit of a tap. Like, that that right side was real tender. <laughs> oh, and his leg was fucked up, too. But I'm just saying, listen, you know, for Blair Cobbs to beat Maurice Hooker to me, you know, that's a significant win. You know, he's a former world champion. But I don't like how um, Maurice Hooker, I know he got all them kids, but he come across as like undisciplined. Like, bro, like, come on, man. How many times you're not going to make weight? Get that shit together. 
get that shit together. But you know what really hurts me about this whole situation is I don't think, you know, with the politics, just look at what's going on with Spence versus Crawford. Like Virgil Ortiz being Mexican and Boots, you know, being the black fighter, historically, those guys should be meeting up. That can be a really, really big fight. But how long will how long are they gonna wait to make it? Is it going to be one of those things? What's it likely will in this landscape, especially since they're with two different promoters, two different broadcasters, it's going to be like, nah, it needs to marinate more. Remember years ago that if it was two top 147 pounders or two top fighters in any division on their way to a world title shot, they will fight each other first. The UK still does that, like where they have like those big domestic clashes, as they call them. But, you know, like Boots and Virgil, or Virgil Ortiz, should be fighting for who's going to be the man among the 147 pounders after Spence versus Crawford. And that's probably going to be a two fight deal. But the shit is frustrating, you know, because when I, when I try to look at a potential fight with Virgil Ortiz and Boots Ennis, both of them, by the way, let's go look at the rankings. Both of them, by the way, ranked very highly by the by all of the sanctioning bodies for example look at this look at this shit right here you got virgil ortiz number one by the wbc number one by the wba even though stani Jonas is the mandatory boots ibf number one but virgil ortiz number three and number two they usually keep vacant um and 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 somebody can somebody help me with this is boots in this currently right now the IBF mandatory. Was the Clayton fight a final eliminator? Is he officially the IBF mandatory? Because from my understanding, isn't Virgil currently the, the WBO mandatory? But when you look at where they are, it's like, oh, okay, so you motherfuckers are not going to fight each other. Huh? I don't see it. And then you got Keith Thurman, who we've been hearing all these rumors about how... Um, how uh, PBC is trying to, what, feed feed Thurman to Boots Ennis and Thurman like, no, I ain't going to be no gatekeeper for these young pups. But I do feel like, damn, man, like we can't even, you know, like, like get what we want anymore. Like, there's no reason why we should have to wait fucking five years. Because think about it. What, it's going to be probably like four years before we see maybe, um, Virgil Ortiz take on Boots Ennis. Like, look at the history. Look at the history. We can't even get them to do Jamal Charlo versus Jaime Munguia. Tank Davis versus Ryan Garcia. That's pretty much dead again. Clayton was a final eliminator because he is ranked number one. And normally the WB, I mean, the IBF won't rank you number one unless you are in a mandatory. But yet they won't fight each other. It don't make sense. If this don't expose it, how fucked up boxing is, then nothing will. And how the rankings don't mean shit, nothing will. And none of these sanctioning bodies has the balls to be like, oh, no, no. You are not going to get no shot at nobody until you fight each other. But as far as the pecking order is concerned, I do believe, I believe it's Stanley Jonas that has to get his shot at the winner of Spence Crawford first, right? Or is it Virgil Ortiz? I mean, the WBO. Who's first in line? From my... Okay, this is the way it looks to me. WBO mandatory first. WBA mandatory second. IBF mandatory third. And nobody's officially the WBC mandatory yet. Stanley Jonas is supposed to be getting a shot. Remember, Stanley Jonas took step aside and fought Jamal James. That was some that that was tough. I like that he did that. But let's face it, the winner of Spence Crawford, you know, maybe even both of them, they're going to move to 154. Both of them, they're going to move to 154, probably at the same time. No, but look at this, though. Austin Trout back, baby. Look at him. Where he at? Number five by the IBF. Austin Trout is back. Don't sleep on Austin Trout. But yeah, realistically though, who are we going to see Virgil Ortiz fight next? And who are we going to see Boots fight next? Realistically, 
Let's let's focus on Virgil Ortiz fights that can be made politically. Politically, politically. Evernessi and he don't want to fucking do nothing. Abel Ramos, maybe. Butayev is PBC. Rashidi Ellis is now PBC. Barrios is PBC. Abel Ramos maybe still PBC. Best Putin is possible. Kavalaskis, he already beat him. Crawley is PBC. Yo, Dennis Uga still healing up. Got his eye face broken. He's PBC. Connor Ben's fighting Eubank Jr. He's match room. Keith Thurman don't want to fight either Virgil Ortiz or Boots. Is it going to be this man? Y'all know who this man is? Dulani M. 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 Bang. Bang. Ming. Is that B supposed to be silent? Y'all know this man? Y'all know this cat from South Africa? 19 and 1 with 15 KOs? Who is this dude? You think they're going to call him up? Kind of like a uh, Walter Cat Cotentuan dude? The dude that Demetrius Andre fought. And you know what? I knew how to pronounce his name. And I and I, I thought I was confident right there saying it. And I forgot how to say it. Walter Cat. Damn. I'm not going to. I forgot how to say it. He fought Dirty Diego Chavez. I met Dirty Diego Chavez in New York. He gave me this, 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 this funny look. He had this big ass coat on, like the um, like the dude from Resident Evil 4. Like he had this long ass like coat. Like he had all these wares under there. Like all these like these spoons and shit. Like in and watches. And I was looking at him like, yo, bro, you look like a thief. <laughs> you look like a a, a a street merchant that stole all your shit. But anyway. Virgil versus Rocha. Oh no. Virgil Ortiz versus Blair Cobbs. You like that shit? You like Virgil Ortiz versus Blair Cops? They're going to give it to you. Come on. Both in the same weight class. He coming off of a win. It's going to be Virgil Ortiz versus Blair Cops. I see it. I, I smell it. You don't smell it? Virgil Ortiz versus Blair Cops. They're going to feed Blair to him. Perfect in-house fight. It'll have a little bit of buzz behind it, I guess. That makes perfect sense to me. It makes sense. That it makes sense. It makes sense. In house, he's at one. He's at one forty-seven. Is you know what? And don't be surprised if he gets ranked next month. Let's see. Is Maurice Hooker ranked anywhere? Nope. Don't be surprised. They're gonna find a spot for him. If Blair Cobbs pop up in any of these rankings next month, you already know what it is. You know what they're going to do. They're going to they're gonna do it. They're going to Virgil Ortiz versus Saddam Mali, bro. You're a low-down degenerate. Ortiz versus Alexis Rocha. Okay, 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 okay. They, you know, but they can save that. They can do Cobbs, then do Rocha. You know, I don't think they're going to be aggressive with that matchmaking, though. We're going to have to see. There he is. There he is. It's possible. It's possible. He beat the shit out of Blair Cobbs. I just put my promoter hat on his all. But yeah, um, I wonder if he'll get another fight before the end of the year. Maybe December, probably will he will he be back in January? Uh, Boots Ennis said on the uh, Danny Garcia, Jose Benavidez broadcast, he was commentating during the uh, prelims on YouTube that he's got a date coming up soon. But I really believe that, you know, they should put him on the Spence um, Crawford undercard. Him and Stanley Jonas, if they're not going to fight each other, I do believe they should be on the undercard. And of course, they're probably going to be matched against some Hispanics. Got to have some Hispanics on there or they're going to have in a Hispanic on the card. And what Hispanic is not fighting right now, they can throw in that joint. I don't know. I can't think off the top of my head. 